What is up, everybody? This is Alex once again with the EOT News Flash, episode 78, a token of our un, in parentheses, appreciation. I am joined by the, the piercer of spells himself, Mr. Stephen. How are you tonight, sir? Doing pretty well. Glad to be on finally. It's been a little while. Yes, yes. I seem to have a rotating door of guests, but that's okay. Um, is that a blanket hung over the window in your house there, Stephen? Yes. As we discussed in the preview, we were trying to figure out how to make the video look better. Well, that really adds something to it. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, like caveman chic, you know, like they hang the skin over the window and I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you should see my bedroom. I have blackout curtains, so it's Whoa. like pitch black, so it's great. EOT newsflash after dark. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You guys came here for magic, right? <laughs> let's delve into the life of Stephen let's, Pierce. Let's talk about magic. Yeah, let's talk about magic. Let's do that instead. Um, yeah, so we've got a lot to talk about tonight. Um, Wizards' inability to share data being one thing. Uh, a lot of data around around uh, week one standard results. And also just some general banter about things that are coming up in the near future. Um, you'll be able to meet the the uh the team from the EOT newsflash coming up very very soon if you're at a very specific location uh on a specific weekend in August but we'll get to that here in a little bit um, <coughs> oh I'm not allowed to spoil it oh no no I was gonna cop spoil it it's not like we're going to GP Denver or anything like okay, that okay yeah there we go and if they had listened to last week's episode they would already know that but uh I think Alex is getting on to me for not listening to last week's episode <laughs> Stephen not taking responsibility here that's okay hey man i had like a crazy busy week at work could it's, not it's i didn't okay. like it to fit too many podcasts in. it's it's okay it's okay but uh we'll dig into we'll we'll you know you punish later or something like that i don't know yeah i'm, I'm sure <laughs> but let's let's talk about fnm steven you like fnm right yeah uh i think fnm is a great way to like support your local LGS and, and you know to get people interested in magic. Yeah. Uh, personally, I have not been to F and M <laughs> in like four months, and prior to that, one F and M it was probably like six months. Yeah. Because uh, my last semester of college uh, was pretty rough. Hey, so it didn't have as much. Like that, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm right there with you. I haven't been to an FNM in a very, very long time. But um, it re recently, uh, Wizards, well, like this week actually, Wizards decided to make a, a pretty significant change to what FNM actually, what they think FNM stands for. And the this was all kind of kicked off by the change that there's not going to be any more FNM promos. So this year we've already gotten the great ones of like Fatal Push and Aether Hub. But those are going away now and being replaced by double face tokens and the rationale behind this is that the FM experience is for the up and coming player who isn't ready to get on the grind yet but just wants to learn how to play the game and have fun playing it and dissuade more seasoned players away from playing an FM and going to play in the standard showdowns and inevitably PPTQs and they, th they have all this data that they think they can point to but they won't show it to us and they think that that they're, we're missing the point on what FNM actually is. So, Stephen, what are your thoughts on this? May like this is a major change. For the past twenty years, Friday night has been Magic Night, and now they're saying it's not essentially. Well, I think uh, it just comes down to what you get out of Magic and like your LGS. Because you know, while I haven't been to an FNM in a long time, I still go to in-store events like. Yeah. Heck, I went to a couple of legacy events prepping for SEG Atlanta this weekend, and it was just it's just something I do, and it's just how I choose to spend my time. So, like as far as F and M, like it's it's sweet. I don't think the promos like ultimately matter because if you're going to F and M for the promo, like that's not the reason you should be going to F and M. Exactly. Like it's just a way to blow off steam, meet new people, and have a lot of fun. Like I don't think you should be going to F and M. For the monetary aspect of it now it's funny i say this because i know i've been a proponent in the dfw community i wish there was a more competitive fnm and the reason for that is 
uh, like I'm traveling the like GPs and stuff, and I would rather play against a higher caliber of player. And if there's a higher yeah. uh, payout F and M, like that happens, and it also gives you know like up and coming players a a thing to strive for. Like they can go to that more competitive F and M, and if you know they do well, like it's a kind of like a stepping stone for them outside of just your now store championships that were game days. Yeah, exactly. And, and I definitely agree, you know, with the whole more competitive edge of F&M. Um, before I moved, you know, Common Grounds was my go-to store. And I would say that the caliber of player that was there on a weekly basis, especially for modern, was pretty high. Um, mm -hmm. And it, I think it really just depends on the area that you live in. Like, my first F&Ms were at a, a, a Lone Star Comics by um, UTA. And the skill level there was way way down here which was good because it seemed to be a lot of new players were joining all in the game at the very same time and the skill level was relatively level and we all just kind of worked our way up together even though the first time i played in i got to sit down against you know blue black control with jason the mind sculptor yeah that happened um so it seems good <laughs> it's yeah i was like yeah frexy crusader he said that's really cool mana leak i was like all right that's fine Frexing Crusader, that's fine. Jason Mines comes there, bounce it. I'm like, okay. Play it again. Mana Leak, okay. All right. Okay. At least you didn't start playing Magic and thinking Wall of Swords was ridiculous because how could anyone ever kill it? <laughs> <laughs> I started off on a red white uh, deck and I was like, do I sideboard these things? <laughs> like, how do they get rid of them? Dies of Doomblade. Mm. <laughs> it did at the time. Yeah. But, but, but yeah, so, like, and I agree with you, Stephen, you know, if you go to FNM for the promo, you're, you're completely, I think you're completely off base. You, you have a much different objective as far as magic goes. And, yeah, I, I don't necessarily care if the prize level is really high. Um, I know that's a, that's a pretty hotly contested issue um, on the DFW magic groups is, you know, where can I go and get the most bang for my buck? And I'm like, well, if you're playing FNM for the most bang for your buck, you're probably not doing things right i don't think and that's completely up to you what your objective is for magic but if you want to have that bang for your buck you got to go to where the bang is yeah so, and, and and i'm not saying that all stores should do it it's just it's nice to have that option and I, and yeah. one of the stores actually took up that call uh, apex um i think it's in irving or, or arlington yeah, they recently moved yeah yeah it, it's it's a little too far for me to like justify going for f and m because I'm up in you know North Dallas, but you know it's so whatever. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And, I, I will, I will go down there to support you know my uh, stance on everything at some point. Yeah, here. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you know on a store by store basis, you know if you're a store that wants to cater to a more you know hardcore group of players, that's absolutely fine. Um, I'm, I'm blanking mm -hmm. on the name of it, but there was a store that was just notorious in North Dallas for just being cutthroat all the time. Um, <laughs> You you might are you laughing because you know what store it is, Stephen? No, it's uh, uh, I I've heard of the store before. I think Gunslingers was the name of it. Just okay. I, that might be. What were you thinking of? Oh no, I didn't know. Oh, uh, okay. I just didn't remember like hearing people say it whenever they came into the PTQs at Lubbock. Oh, okay, yeah, um, yeah. I think it, I think it was Gunslingers, and I don't think it's open anymore. Um, but just notoriously known for the most cutthroat F and M's possible, which is you yeah. know whatever if that's your scene it's your scene but yeah for for wizards to come in and just give the de facto statement that fnm is not for you know enfranchised players that's really kind of rubbing me the wrong way specific you know i don't play a lot of fnm myself but that kind of sucks you know yeah if you fostered a community and you're trying to tell us that it is one thing i can imagine that some people are just gonna go yeah right whatever we're going to keep doing this way. We're going to do it. And the fact that they're changing the toke, the, the promos of double space tokens, I don't think is going to change that all that much for people. I don't think. Yeah. I think it's actually kind of funny. The fact that they think that this change is going to uh, <laughs> alter or like change the mindset of the people who are already going to FNM because it's yeah. like for those who are competitive or like a little bit more aggressive than they should be for FNM. Cause we have a couple people like that around. Mm -hmm. Um, the the token is still going to be something that's semi iconic, yeah. And just like it, it's going to be a cool thing to have. Yeah. And I mean, like 
I collected one of each of the promos just because that was a collection I wanted to try and keep. And, you know, there are going to be people who are going to do the same thing. I'll just be like, yeah, why not? Oh, yeah, yeah. I know, now, it's certainly one thing, you know, um, when they're talking about how there wasn't a significant impact on attendance numbers when there was, like, a cool promo like Fatal Push or Edge Hub <laughs> was. Oh, my gosh. Which is true, but... If, how many times did you walk into an FNM, or if you walked into an FNM, Steven, would you know what the promo was for that month? Uh, whenever I was in Lubbock, yes, because there are FNM had no prizes to it, oh. so I would oh. <laughs> I would know whether or not I wanted to like try hard, but <laughs> not really. And like go for the promo, or I'd just be like, ah, oh, whatever. I'm tired after like four rounds because we had six, seven round F and M's oh with God. the top eight in Lubbock. No yeah, case. so like it was fun because whenever we got to actually play Magic, like we got to play a butt ton of it, and yeah. the store owner was just like, yeah, I don't mind staying up to like one, two a.m. You guys cool with that? Yeah, sure, let's do it. It's a bunch of college and, kids. Of course, you're fine with it. Yeah, and then like we just went to Applebee's afterwards, and nice. it was great. The bees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I would never know. I, I know that some stores got, like, the little posters they put in the window that show the actual promo. But as far as I'm aware, Wizards never really said, hey, this week you can go win an Aether Hub promo, like, on their Twitter accounts or Facebooks. You would get the usual article saying, you know, here are the next couple months worth of promos, but there wasn't ever a recurring point of saying, hey, it's Friday night, go play FNM and go win a Fatal Push promo. They never really did that. So yeah. maybe if they did, I, I don't know. And just to have the data collected, you know, the data they have collected apparently for only a couple of months is just really, really shoddy if you ask me to. Well, it's not just a couple of months. They can just go back and look at all the people who signed up for FNM for like the past five, six years. Which is, which is true, yeah. But this hasn't been a problem. I mean, the, the, the quality of FNM promos has not been really called into question up until – really recently as far you mean as whenever can... people started to complain exactly yeah i mean because i never really okay like that. again uh like i had mentioned in the preview i think this is part of just the change in gamer mentality yeah um due to like outside factors so i i understand where you're going with your point but i don't think that it's a good defense yeah, I, I can see that too. Um, and, and, and really, like what it comes down to, I think, is you know, if Wizards can say what they want FNM to be all they want, whether or not the community as a whole listens to them and says, yeah, okay, fine, whatever, you know, all of our enfranchised players now go to our standard showdowns and do that and have our new players come in to play FNM, it's not going to impact anything like overnight. It might not impact anything ever. And as a matter of fact, I would be surprised if it actually did. Uh, um, but. Yeah, I mean, they did the open house event, which was kind of cool from what I understood. My, there was a bunch of shops in my local area that held a ton of them and got some really good feedback from them. That's great, but you're not going to change the mindset of an entire community with just one article and taking away their promos. Yeah. It's, it's not going to happen. <laughs> I don't get why takeaway was what they went with. Like, yeah. why not, like, phase this out and, like, provide the promos in addition to or sorry provide the tokens in addition to the promos yes. except with except like instead of the top two players at each FNM getting the promo like you go down to like i don't know how much the tokens would cost but like try doing the the top the top four plus like six randoms throughout yeah. Yeah. Um, the event because i know with the promos you were supposed to do the top two and then one random yeah. like just try and provide like hey look come to FNM, you might randomly get this and if you do yeah. well you will get this yeah like, or like make it be a you get a promo or get the token just by entering FNM, which is really cool um, yeah al be, although i think like you'd have to limit that to one token a month because like yeah. that that'd be a lot of cards yeah i mean they can just print whatever they want i'm, I'm sure they're like uh you know costs associated with it but oh, oh sure yeah. they could they could they could fill the extra sheets on their um you know sets mm -hmm. with those tokens rather than just well oh, i guess not at the double face because that's that is printing problems from yeah later, right? yeah but, I, but i see where you're going though but yeah like they have a method to implement these at not a high cost 
I'm, but I'm sure someone's already done all the numbers and it like just yeah, doesn't work. Yeah, so, yeah. The, the one the one comparison I was listening to Magic Evan Irwin's Magic Mike's today, and he was talking about how when he was working for Star City Games, he introduced the uh, Star City Games game night, which a lot of stores would hold on various mm-hmm. nights of the week, and it was like a supplementary F and M sort of. You know, you be it could be modern or whatever format you want it to be, and Star City Games created their own. You know merchandise to go with it like the little creature tokens the little pins and all that stuff you know mm-hmm. that's another way to kind of supplement fnm if you want to have an additional night to have play magic when it's supposed to be more of a casual environment is what the goal was whether or not that was actually the case is completely you know re- irrelevant but I, I just think that there's this, to take something away like this and expect the entire face of a night of magic to change is a really it's it's the wrong way to go with things and, yeah and i and i and i hope that wizard sees that and they're like you know what guys were we were wrong I, and that's that's a that's a rough thing to say is to for them to admit that but i can definitely see it happening i mean I, are you sure because hey guys we needed two more days of data <laughs> oh by the way <laughs> we're taking away the data you see so that uh we uh, we don't look as silly sometimes. Yeah, but if you complain enough, we'll eventually we'll fix it for you. If you don't like, uh, yeah, plan, we'll take away the problem by enough. making it not exist because yeah. you won't know it exists. Exactly. If you complain about rotation yeah. enough, we'll let you have Gideon in standard for two freaking years. Hey, <sighs> no, like, okay, okay. The rationale behind changing that back, like, I, I think that was good. Yeah, let's, like they, not, let's not get into that. But yeah, just, yeah, that's that's a different topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah it just right. goes to show that there is a precedent set for people complaining enough, and wizards will eventually listen. Which, yeah, if they do, they do. That's not the point. Just the point is, keep going to F and M. Keep going to your standard showdown. Keep going to your PPTQs, your in-store events. Keep going to these things and keep playing Magic. That's what I think. Like this, this is to me is all completely irrelevant. Yeah, it's just like do do whatever you have fun with because that's the whole yeah. point of magic. It's to you know relieve stress, have a good time with friends. Yeah, just play silly cards. Just play. Yeah, if you're Steven, you play the Defender deck. Oh yeah, that <laughs> deck was so a blast. Let, let's talk about standard. Let's 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 talk about actual magic cards, though. Let's do that for 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 you know for a change. And, All right, I'm down. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's talk about standard. Um, that's a weird thing for me to say. Um, yeah, we had our first week of actual our division standard took place over in Cincinnati, Ohio, with uh, Star City Games. Our stop on their SCG tour, and yeah, let's 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 say we break down the top eight here. So what do you think about that? And just kind of talk about how frankly diverse the format is well it's that's always going to be the case for the first week but yeah Yeah, let's do it from where we were to where we are now i think oh yeah very very nice so in first place but three tower decks made the top eight (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah kind of like yeah (laughs) <laughs> All right, we'll leave that horse alone. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. So, in first place, not one, not two, not three, but four color control. Have you ever seen a control like win a week one event like this, Steven? Uh, no, the because typically no. <laughs> aggro is like all over the place week one. Yeah. And. And the guys, like, only one Gear Hulk is just so shocking. Yeah, right? So, so, so here's our list here. One Torrential Gear Hulk, one Linvala, two Dovin Bond. It's his only two of, like, actual what I'd call a threat. Um, one yeah. Jason Revelor of Secrets, one Nahiri, and one Nicol Bolas God Pharaoh. And then 26 of your Glimmers, your Essence Scatters, your Magma Sprays, and Harness Lightnings. The full just just guy control package. What do you think of this list? This is just absurd. So for like later in the season, this list is like, oh, maybe this is just finely tuned for the meta and like this is just like perfect and what we should be going off of. But like early in the season, it it's funny because it gets the mentality of, oh, this was just a tray binder deck. Yeah. But I mean, to be fair, like 
if you start your process, um, you know, back whenever you get the full spoilers, like you can figure out things like this. Oh, it's yeah. just not very common. Yeah, unless this guy is like, you know, Michael Hamilton here is like a like a time traveler, and he oh, actually yeah. just took like the PT winning deck, you know. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that that's quite a stretch. I don't think I don't think an SCG has mirrored a PT that followed it. No, it really hasn't. But maybe this guy's pulling from tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, okay, that was fine. That was that was a good setup. <laughs> but but so so yeah, like just to see a deck like this just win an event like this is absolutely kind of insane. But he is showing the power of a lot of new. Uh, mm -hmm. A new organization cards. You know, Nicol Bola shows up as a one of. We, we're seeing Supreme Will. Um, uh, that's actually about it. <laughs> uh, a, couple, a couple of the defeat cards from the sideboard, but uh, yeah, a, those a, are a it braid, for the new one. A, a braid is really good against other Gear Hulks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This... <laughs> we're not yeah, like our this. This is just really. strange. <laughs> like it's cool. Yeah, uh, and I like it, but I but I don't think I'd play it. No, I mean I'll pl I played some janky control decks in my life, but uh, whew, this is this is rough. The fact that he's not playing Hour of Devastation is quite interesting. I think um, if you listen to last episode, which I know Stephen didn't, um, Sean and I basically talked about that card for the entirety of the episode and how dominating we thought that card was going to be, and that doesn't seem to be the case here. So like. Let's let's kind of go through a couple more of these lists here, Stephen, and then circle back to our devastation and talk about why that didn't show up in the numbers that we thought it might have. Um, so in second place, we have Jonathan Rossum playing White Blue Monument, Oketra's Monument to be exact, which is basically just a white weenie aggro deck that makes the things mm -hmm. cheaper with Monument. How do you like Monument here? Well, I think it's a really cool list that came about due to um, things being posted... Uh, by Wizards from the 5-0 Leagues. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, no, I, I think this deck's pretty cool. Uh, I played it with it some this week because we've been testing Standard because it's the only deck we haven't figured out yet for Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, the deck is, like, surprisingly resilient because it just does everything. Yep. Like, you have a high land count, so you can play all your guys and keep cracking your clues to, to like, dig through your deck. And then you have these Dustadons that just absolutely yes. blow people out. Like, holy but, uh, how good is that card in this deck? Oh, it's really good. And it's really crazy, too, because even though, like, they're just running three, but the amount of dig you have in the deck, it's like you're going to hit, you're going to be hit by one. Yeah, and exactly. Because you've got... The only... Uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, the only downside to the deck is uh, if you don't hit Monument, like, it, it, it kind of feels like it just dirtles. I mean, yeah. it dirtles with Monument, but it like yeah. <laughs> it dirtles more, uh, just not doing anything, and it doesn't feel quite as good. Yeah, and, and you mentioned the amount of dig that it has. So we're talking about Thraben Inspector, Bygone Bishop, and Cloud Blazer to mm -hmm. accelerate your health through the deck. And then, like you said, Dusk Dawn is an absolute house here because casting the Dusk half clears the board usually, and then the Dawn half brings every creature in the deck back to your hand, which I think is absolutely insane. Um, yeah, this, this I think this is really cool. Um, this is this is high on my list actually um, for GP Denver this year or next month. Actually. Yeah, I, th I think it should. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That and then the the blue white flash decks that are sort of showing up again with um, Nimble Obstructionist and Avison also look quite Ooh. good. Yeah. Yeah. Nimble Obstructionist seems sweet. A lot. I know a lot of people like disregarded it because of Warlord Virtuoso, but yeah. oh, geez, I've played so many matches. These these past two weeks, and I have not I have not seen a World of Virtuoso yet. Really, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was White Blue Monument, and then in third place we had Four Color Emerge, which is basically the old Team of Emerge decks, but with a little bit of uh, black thrown in for Grim Flare, and so we get to see Champion of Wits, brand new card from Outer Dev Station, showing up here to be the filter effect that this deck needed. Elder Deep Fiends, Grim Flares, Haunted Dead, Prize Amalgams, Ishkana. And the whole package of the transverses, grab with the pass, and Kozlox return. How do you like our little Emerge Eldrazi buddy sticking around a little bit longer here, Stephen? It's pretty cool. Uh, I think uh, like the Vessel of Nascency and the grab with the pass package is like really sweet for just being able to go through your deck like it always has been. And then the addition of strategic planning plus 
um, champion of wits, like you can just dump cards into your graveyard pretty consistently. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's it's why I think that more decks should be boarding at least to Crook of Condemnation, regardless of whatever you're playing, because there are just a lot of good like graveyard synergies already, like whether it be Gear Hulk, uh, Emerge, Delirium. The only deck that you really don't hit with a Crook is uh, Mono Red and then the Monument deck. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, you still have Crook to hit their Dustadon, so it's, like, not completely dead if, for some reason, you have to grind harder than them. So, say yeah. you're playing the Abzan Tokens deck. Yeah, yeah, I can behind that, yeah. What's what's interesting to me is that the, the original Teamer Emergeless, or even just the Blue Red Emergeless, couldn't actually ever cast their uh, their prized amalgams. This prized one actually amalgams, can, yeah. <laughs> which I just think is it's cute. I, I never understood why they wouldn't just put a Swamp in the deck, but... I'm no standard master, but I just think it's yeah, it's like the opportunity cost. You're right; it, it didn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, but like the the sideboard here is you know we've got Distant Mindbender, we have Liliana the Last Hope, Bonte's Last Reckoning, Never Return. I mean, there's a lot of black in this deck, so I can totally see the the appeal for it. And it just turns like this more mid range build. Um, not hitting the pieces of your engine though makes this seem like a real dirtle fest, more so than Blue White Monument is without the monuments. So, not not super high on this one, but I do like Elder Deep Fiend quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did I did I show you the sweet picture from a couple of days ago with the Elder Deep Fiend? I don't think you did. All right, so I've been working <laughs> on a uh, Blue Red Alchemist deck, right? And uh, Oh, wait, was this from the, the screenshot you sent to us on the chat? Yeah, I think so. Because okay. I've, I've yeah. been like tuning this deck, and uh, I forgot about Flame Lash, so I started with Refuse to Cooperate, and uh, I hit I hit a new record, and I refused an Elder Deep Fiend, <laughs> and my <laughs> opponent was at seven, and it was so great too. Holy crap. <laughs> my my opponent forecasted the Deep Fiend so hard because. Whenever you go to emerge, you have to first like psych a creature, then pay costs, yeah. so Moto can recognize you know how much the difference is supposed to be. Right. So sense. my opponent's like creature went to the graveyard and then came back, and I'm just like, oh, we're holding up this war for forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have sent us a, a number of refuse to cooperate screenshots of just like your opponent dying on the stack after casting. Out yeah. of the station. I mean, just any number of ridiculous things, and that card seems pretty good actually for the meta right now. I mean, so like it's just a blue red spell deck, right? Just kind of like pseudo control almost. Mm, uh, no, no, no. It's not. It's not control in any regard. It's thermo alchemist. Uh, oh, that's so right. it's kind of like the old one, okay, uh, okay. except uh, I mean, I don't care if people know, but uh, <laughs> Firebrand Archer is better than Jace Ren's Prodigy was for the old deck, and like Jace was like stellar. But this card is just absolutely insane. That's high praise, and that's the one that you can tap to deal a point of damage to all opponents, correct? And then no, Firebrand, Firebrand Archer is the uh, one in a red, 2-1, that any time you cast a non-creature spell, it pings them for one. Oh, that's right, that's right, yeah. So, like, it's an aggressive body that you can just keep pushing through because of your removal. So, like, yeah. if they're playing a creature deck... You can just point all the rem- removal at their creatures and just like, all right, get this out of here, get this out of here. I'm gonna hit you. I'm gonna hit you. Yeah. Although, if Warlord Virtuoso picks up that card, probably goes down in value some because it can't actually get in. Yeah, yeah, and it's like a two one, isn't it? Like it's a pretty. Yeah, it's a two one. Yeah. yeah, so it hits hard. Surprisingly big body. So when you dive it on Moto, you know who it was. <laughs> it's that guy down in the corner. <laughs> All right, in fourth place, we have Steven Dykeman playing black green energy with absolutely no new cards. Dun, da, da, da. Still a good deck, though, right? Yeah. Wait, it's playing Crook of Condemnation in the it's sideboard. In the sideboard, it doesn't count. Oh, come on. <laughs> you are right, though. Yeah, there's not. But. It's kind of interesting because even like the PTQ on Magic Online, there wasn't too much innovation. Like you just go with the solid choice. Like oh, yeah. Mardu Vehicles won that PTQ, and in like a braids are everywhere, and like it still does well. Yeah, exactly. And and as we kind of go through, there's about let's see, over yeah, 64 places worth of deck lists to work through here from the Cincinnati Open, and we see a lot of different decks, and we'll see a lot of Mardu kind of. Sp- 
sprinkled throughout the bottom of it. So, yeah, the safe choices were still there and definitely still did well. Um, yeah. White Boom Monument took fifth place in the hands of Ben Weinberg. We have Mono Red Aggro, Jonathan Job. And uh, you look at this and you typically think of Mono Red Aggro as like a bunch of one and two drops. Not Glory Bringers and uh, Reality Smashers. <laughs> yeah. They're <laughs> so, just the top end. That's a big top end. It's true. That's a big top end. <laughs> so we've got On Crop Crasher, Urshiger Kenra, Eldrazi Obligator, Falcon Wrath Gorger, Glory Bringers, Reality Smashers, Soul Scar Mage. That card's pretty sweet. Thought mm-hmm. Not Seer, Hazard at the Fervent, because why not? That card's a beating. Um, yeah. Kari Zev, Skyship Raider, with a little pirate monkey, and Chandra Torture Defiance. Like, what do you make of a deck like this here, Stephen? This just seems kind of goofy, if you ask me. Well, no, I think it. I, I think this deck was actually the perfect deck to bring to week one. Because, you know, it's if you don't know what to do, play aggro. Like, that's a pretty good, uh, like, um, stance for, like, the first few weeks of standard. Because... If people are trying to dirtle around and they don't have a tuned list, your aggro deck is naturally going to do better against them because you're going to be hitting them harder and you like take fewer turns. And you're just like, okay, yeah, you, you weren't able to assemble uh, your combo. Like, okay, I got you. Yeah. It's like you, able, you didn't find an Elder Deep Fiend to flash back your Kozilex return. Like, okay. Yeah, and occasionally it's just like if the game goes long, it's playing 24 lands too, so eventually it could just start casting these 4 and 5 and um, in some case, oh yeah, 4 and 5 drops, which mm-hmm. if you expect to be a, a regular mono red aggro deck, you just get killed at the door by Glorybringer and Reality Smasher. Like, who sees this kind of stuff coming? Um, and of course, um, he's this, um, let's see, it was uh, John's actually playing, you know, Rune Map Ruins, Sun Scorched Desert. So he's got some reach in the deck too, which I think is just, it's its so cool. Just yeah, it's really. Happen. Yeah, it's really frustrating <laughs> to Sweltering Suns and they yeah. have like a desert in play and then they go <laughs> Remnant Ruins and you're just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm just dead. I want to know if he killed anybody with Sun Scorched Desert this weekend. Oh, like, I'm sure. Like they're at one. And he's playing four of the damn thing and he's like. Can you? Like, there, <laughs> there's like no reason too. not to for this deck. It's just like free. It's yeah. just free. It's great. Yeah, like I, it's it's such a random out of nowhere deck, but it's yeah. Week one, if you're not ready for an aggro, aggro deck, especially mono colored, you're in for a a bad time. Yeah, a really bad time. <laughs> so let's move on to some of the place with Adam Bowman's mono black zombie which again isn't playing any new cards uh but it is playing kalitas in the main board which is kind of cool so i think i think that's kind of the new standard now i, I think uh, so too yeah some testing of zombies uh some people are up to like three kalitas in the main <laughs> just because you have to get through the team or energy decks that can like clog up or like they just have too much removal yeah oh i, I also like having Voldar and pariah in the sideboard as well to kind of have like that triple yeah. effect yeah, that seems pretty efficient as well. <laughs> yeah, and what, it's a 6-5 flyer whenever it flips, yeah, too? Yeah, it's big. I had it at the um, um, Outer Moon pre-release, and it, uh, it, cleaned <laughs> out. it cleaned house for me a couple of times. Right on. But, uh, yeah, sometimes even 6-4 Dragon, it's fine. Nothing to scoff at. And then in eighth place, Jason Morgan was playing Teamer Energy, which is pretty much just dudes. Yep. I mean, dudes I like, the deck. Yeah, dudes not deck. Yeah. <laughs> I like seeing Ronus the Indomitable in here. I like a good. I like a good God card. Yeah. But, uh, Ronus is Ronus is hard to uh, answer outside of our devastation. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, all the gods are. But like, I I've, I saw a list of um, of Jund Death Shadow. That's playing both Hazaret and Ronus. Um, LSU is actually playing right. on, a, on a video that I watched last night. Never activated either of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did they just die like before they got a hit or what? They, yeah, he was always dead usually. Yeah, he would have like an, one more card in hand for Hazaret or not enough man to actually activate Ronus's ability or his death shadow wasn't quite big enough or the Tarmogoyf had just gotten nuked by, you know, Graveyard Hate and he's it was it was funny to watch somebody who's as good as LSV is who can probably win an entire tournament with like a pile of you know 
Islands and Stormcrows were crying out loud, but to see him just like struggle through these these events with a deck that was just probably a fluke when it five out its league is pretty funny. I mean, you can run hot. Yeah, sometimes you run hot. Uh, not necessarily a fluke. Pilots can like. I think a more experienced pilot on like any given list is scarier than like uh, someone who does who just like picks up the deck and has like a high level of play skill. Although like LSB doesn't like qualify in that. Like he's just oh, yeah. nuts. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually an interesting, interesting, interesting point. Is like, and I'll use a personal example here. Um, the the PPTQ that I took Bantel Drazi to after playing it at one F and M. And making the finals of that PPTQ, um, like like you said, you know, it's just like there's a, there's a difference between high skill level of player and you know just running hot. I think in some cases, which is you know it happens sometimes. And yeah. When, and when it's you, it feels really good. Yeah. It does. <laughs> yeah. When I told people that it was my first time playing the deck for real, people were like, "No way, this 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 kid, no, no." Yeah, humble, I, I, humble brags. <laughs> I, I like to tell people whenever I play uh, Legacy, and because I play Storm, I was just like, "Oh yeah, this is my first GP." <laughs> <laughs> and you just like, oh, okay, I, I counted to ten, I did it. That is a lie. We are looking at the kid who was top aided two vintage championships with Storm, and that's yeah. harder to do than. And I'm only like I've only played in two as well. Yeah. yeah. Don't don't be fooled by his his boyish good looks here, people. Steven will destroy you. He is the oncoming storm. Just oh, uh, I think I think Caleb Sher gets to keep that keep that title. Well, he's been but I, it for forever. You get to be tonight. You are the oncoming storm. Okay, thank you. You you are welcome. That's a, that's yeah. a title. You keep that. <laughs> So let's dig a little bit more into uh, Cincinnati here. A couple other things that were popping up. Of course, Mardu Vehicle shows up. Um, various Grixis and Blue Red Control decks also showing up and, you know, kind of making themselves known. Um, was there, we Kind of looking through the list here, Stephen, was there anything that really stuck out to you as just kind of curious or something you weren't expecting to actually show up this weekend? Um, not particularly because I thought the forum was going to be mostly wide open. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, like through our testing, like we could not find a deck that we really enjoyed. It was more of like we just needed to play a deck for a while to get used to it, and like we could start doing well. Sure. Yeah. So, I think the, I think the five color planeswalkers from Todd Stevens I was is really just sweet. Looking at it, actually. Um, <laughs> outside of that, like everything's kind of like as to be expected. Like yeah. you got a couple of ramp decks that popped up. You have the Eldrazi list that emerged because of the. Uh, the desert lands, like they're just they're just great for those decks. Mm-hmm. And it's funny that you know, still the devoid um, uh, mana confluence like hasn't made these things, but <laughs> just it just kind of goes to show like you need more utility on on a land like that. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a really good point too. So kind of like look, let's look forward to next week, and you know, like the next couple weeks actually, you know, obviously we have a, a truncated amount of of lists coming out of the dailies. You know, we're mm-hmm. only getting five lists a day now. Um, looking at a wide open field like this for you know someone who plays a lot of competitive magic, Stephen, what is what, you know if you're gonna get, don't give us away anything you know that you're working on, obviously, but if there's a deck or an archetype that you would feel comfortable taking into a field like this, what would you recommend for people who are kind of looking to get an edge? At their next um, their next big event, uh, so I think I would start off with the white blue monument deck. Just see if you like that style of play, because it's uh, it's pretty resilient if you can hit the monument. Like even though braids are running around, like you really like if they don't play a threat before they destroy your monument. Well, actually, okay, it really depends on if you're on the play or the draw. Like, yeah. if you're on the play and you're going to go Monument on three and they were on the draw and they just upgrade it then and then they play a three drop, that's really bad. Yeah. But if it's flipped, like, you're, that, that's fine because they're spending their turn three to do that and they most likely didn't have a, like, one or a two drop depending on what archetype you're playing against. Well, they have a braid. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, I, I would start with White Blue Monument. Uh, I think the ramp decks are actually surprisingly powerful, yes. but I don't think someone has figured out the right mix yet. I know. I totally uh, agree, actually. Yeah. I know one of the guys over on the First Strike podcast had had mentioned that like he was doing pretty well with something. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's around, and then uh, I think the 
the the planeswalker deck uh <laughs> that's a deck i would pick up just to tinker with and try Naturally. because like oath of nissa plus planeswalkers like I, i'm sold that's like let's do it right there yeah <laughs> I, I will. I will try it at least once or twice. Yeah, I, I think if it comes down to like the eleventh hour and I just don't have anything to play for Denver, I will probably auto default to five color planeswalkers. Yeah, just just give it a go. Just, be like, here yeah. we go. Like, how do you spend seventy dollars, Alex? You play all the colors. You just play. Yeah. Those, like no fear. Um, Herpa derpy magic at its best. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely with you as far as like decks that I'm looking at right now. Um, and I, I, I am scouring the list much, much closer than I was than I would than I normally would be. Um, I do like the red green ramp decks. I think that you know being able to fire off Ulamog after going from Hour of Promise on four and then hitting double Sanctum of Ugin and then hitting Ulamog yeah. on five is still that's going to end a lot of games. And I think that's really, really powerful there. Um, and having, again, Oath of Nissa to kind of churn through the deck a little bit faster is pretty sweet there. Um, Wipe with Monument, I'm also pretty high on as well. And I also like um, these blue-red, you know, pseudo Grixis control decks that are splashing just like a single nickel bolus to just go way over the top. And, I, I'm, and I'm kind of trying to figure out what the trick is to the mirror or just, you know, in general, you know, what if they kill all of your gear hulks? You know, what's plan B at that point? So I think I've got a couple of ideas, but... Uh, the trick to the mirror is being on the draw. Yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> like the card quality in that matchup is, or the card quantity is more important and, and then going first there. Yeah. Because you want to hit your lands. I totally agree with that. Yeah. And then having Supreme Will as, as, a, as a constant filter less than a um, counter magic, I think is pretty important as well. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. But hopefully I'll be able to get in some amount of testing so that way if I do default to a control deck for Denver, um, I don't have to walk into an event never actually playing the control deck ever, but it's kind of my bread and butter, so maybe, you know, play skill, yeah. play skill better lucky than good. I don't know. Or maybe just mono red Eldrazi. We'll see what happens. Hey, man, better <laughs> lucky than good comes up whenever you can't beat the top of oh, yes. deck. Oh, it's so, <laughs> so rough. Sometimes you're just running hot, though, and it's all the luck in the world and it's in your hands. Um, oh, yeah. But, but yeah, so like, given like the results of Standard this week one, obviously it's very, very early in the format. You know, how do you feel about Standard right now? Uh, I really like it. Um, it's yeah. definitely in a lot better place than it was with Marvel and Felidar Guardian. Mm -hmm. Like, while I think, okay, no, Marvel, like, it, it sucks. <laughs> but with Felidar Guardian, like, there was some interaction, and it came down to a lot of, like how you wanted to sequence the game. Yeah. And I thought that was kind of cool because like the Mario versus uh, Felidar Guardian, like the matchup was like, it was supposed to be favored for Mario, but a good Felidar Guardian player could like navigate their way through it. Yeah. And, and it was just cool to like be able to watch the culmination of like a plan play out. Like yeah, you're just I like, agree. I completely agree. Yeah. We're going through this route rather than just, you know, the value energy plan that they could do with the virtuosos or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now here, here's, here's one for you, Stephen with standard being shaken up as it has been wild, baseless speculation time. Might anything get unbanned before the pro tour? No, not before the pro tour, but I could see, <laughs> I could okay, see, after the pro tour. I could see Smuggler's Copter making it off. Yeah, I think do. that there's enough hate for it at the moment that it's it, it it's still one of those like must answer things. But let's be honest, there are a lot of must answer threats in standard right now. I think that's just because of you know the power creep with the creatures. And, and I'm not saying that's a problem. It's just like the development that Magic has uh, gone to at, at this stage. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I completely agree, actually. Um, I, I could also make a, a pretty decent case for um, Reflector Mage, possibly. Um, not having collected company in the format anymore, maybe. And how do you get Alex to play more standard? You let him play sweet blue-white cards. But you can't give, you can't give <laughs> Monument access to Reflector Mage. Oh, my I, I gosh. Think, I, think that's, I think that's too much. Steven, do you know what you just did? You sparked you you I feel like I'm five again. I there's a happiness inside of me that wants this to happen and yeah, I wanted to have yeah. Oh my goodness. I mean <laughs> I don't think I don't think there's another BNR update. 
until after Ixalan. So. Yeah, it's, it's after the Pro Tour. Wah, wah. Uh, so. Well, no, no, no. I don't think they were doing the one after the Pro Tour, right? right. Because they, they had, again? yeah, because they were saying that the the frequency of the BNR update was like causing too many problems with how uh, people were um, valuing their cards. Like they they didn't want to admit that like the secondary market was involved, and they didn't want there to be a consumer confidence problem each time a BNR this came up. Yeah, yeah. So the next one is, so the, the most recent one was Ju- June 14th. Right, which um, was the... Yeah, so I'm trying to find app- that one. Pro- and then the next one will be August 28th. So... Oh, so there's one. Okay. Yeah, so, so after, so we're going to see it after GP Denver. That's That's interesting. Nothing's going to happen in standard. It's no, okay. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Modern, who knows? Legacy, who knows? Vintage, who knows? Um, they just they just <laughs> need to get Gataxian Probe all the way under the rug with Treasure Cruise and Dig Through Time and just uh, ban it in Legacy. I'd be super sad, but yeah. uh, I will play that card <laughs> whenever I can. Yeah, like... I've, I've been looking at a lot of Legacy Lost recently from uh, MTG Goldfish's, you know, This Week in Legacy articles, and Legacy looks to be in a really good place, and if there were enough stores in here to actually play any Legacy, I might be inclined to finish out some decks. Yeah. You should uh, you should try out Magic Online, man. Some things can be expensive because they just haven't been reprinted in a while, but that's, that's uh, it's, it's worth a shot. Another, another hole in my wallet, and that's okay. <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be that big. Like there are different services you can get to like rent cards, and it's really cool. Yeah, that's, I, that's actually true. And, and you want to mention that really quickly, kind of. Um, if you, if you are testing for Denver or any major event, Stephen has been using a really cool service. And so is Sean. So if you want to talk about that really quickly, and we'll give him a free plug, I guess. Oh yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like I've I've actually spread this around to almost everyone. Um, like in my closer like play group. Uh, but uh, it's uh, called Mana Traders. Mm-hmm. Uh, the system is really sweet. It's very quick. Uh, there are like some availability issues whenever like there's one deck that's dominant, or at a, at the start of a, a new set like Hour of Devastation, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, and it it's very awesome from a grinder's aspect because. Uh, in the two months that I've uh, been like using Mana Traders, I've already borrowed like close to like seven thousand ticks worth of stuff. And it's just because it's like, I'll pick up a deck, be like, all right, I didn't like this deck, throw it back. Pick up a deck, didn't like this one, throw it back. And it's just like being able to do that without actually having to invest the ticks or the money into that deck is just so sweet. Yeah, and you're paying a flat monthly fee. Like, what was it? Like Thirty-five bucks. <laughs> Yeah, it, for for us, uh, for Sean and I, yeah, we went with the thirty-five uh, for the up to three hundred and fifty limit, and uh, I've I've been very pleased with it. And I don't I don't think unless I get like sponsored by someone, I'm ever gonna like end my subscription. Oh yeah, most definitely. And like, to I would really increase my amount of magic that I play as well. So, and that's definitely one thing I've been looking at doing. So. I have been heavily considering it as well. So if you if you if you want to know more about it, I would definitely you know shoot Stephen a, a message over on Twitter at Mister Spell. Oh wait, at S Spell Pierce. Yeah, it's S Spell Pierce. No, no Pierce. Yeah, S Spell Pierce. But thank you, sir. <laughs> We're all gentlemen here, after all. But yeah, yeah. Uh, shoot shoot Stephen a message over on Twitter at S Spell Pierce, and he will give you the the full rundown on Mana Traders, um, and you might even get to play against him at an event on Magic Online, or how cool would it be, Steven, if they could meet us in person? Oh, you mean like at an upcoming event that all of us are kind of going to? I think that might be kind of interesting, you know, not to, you know, toot our own horn, but we're kind of cool people in person. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'd be down to meet us, right? I would, I would meet us, really too. That's a really weird yeah. conversation, but sure, <laughs> let's, let's go with it. What's a little self-aggrandizing that, you know, but so... so you probably heard it here last week um, that that we're gonna be going to GP Vegas or not GP but D- Denver. Oh man, GP Denver, <laughs> GP Vegas is next year. Um, GP Denver, um, the weekend of August the eighteenth, and a lot of us from the ETU News Flash. Um, Sean's gonna be there. Sweeney's gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. Um, James will be hopefully there. Hopefully Justin, yeah. Yeah, hopefully Justin will be there too, and some other previous co-hosts and motley crews that you might recognize. 
and I am going to try and put together some cool free swag that you can, if you if you come up to me and say, hey, I know you from the podcast that you do, I will gladly give you some of this free swag. It's probably be like a little token of some kind that has like a little, you know, something on it. Um, yeah, so I will have those on me and as will the rest of the, the co-host. So I hope to have that all um, taken care of in the next couple of weeks before that tournament kicks off so I can have that with me at the tournament floor. Um, so yeah, definitely come and say hello to us and we're going to keep mentioning this until the weekend of GP Denver. So come and say hello to us and we'll take, take pictures with us because we're so important. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now, now you're pushing a little far. I, but, I, I, but we could at least like I, I think it'd be sweet uh, for those who get in like early on Friday. We could do like a dinner meetup. We just need to like discuss and yeah, figure yeah, it definitely. Out. I'll be I'll be landing kind of early on Friday, so I I am all for if if there's any interest out there to hook up with us and you know hang out. That's I'm I'm totally for and we can you know have a good magical time in Denver. See, the thing is, you plan it, then they come. Yes, we'll plan it first. We'll figure something out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and if you invest we'll in the forty dollar yes. tier, you can have dinner with us. Yes. <laughs> what? What? No, there's no charge to this. They just like tag along to whatever restaurant. Get out of here. <laughs> and if you pledge now, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is because you I don't have a Patreon set up yet, no, right? No, it's not. This is not K E R E either. This is not P B S. This is. <laughs> there are no prize tiers. It's it's. No. Okay. Before we go too deep down that rabbit hole, I think that's all for tonight. Um, yeah, standard looks great. Keep playing Magic. Don't let Wizards tell you that FM is not for you and franchise players out there. Keep going and get your free or your suit or your winnable double face token, and that's all. It's gonna be great. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be back next week with probably more shenanigans. Um, I am betting that Wizards will say something stupid again that we'll be able to uh, dissect, and that'll be fun. And we will cons- we will see the constantly changing center meta game, so that'll be fun too. Yeah, they uh, they don't always say something stupid. It's okay. They they hit pretty high sometimes too. Yeah, sometimes, it's okay. Don't, sometimes don't dog do. on that hard. Yeah, sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. But it's it's a toss up. So yeah. So, as always, um, check us out over on Facebook at EOT Newsflash. Find us on Twitter at EOT Newsflash again. And Steven's over on Twitter as well at S Bell Pierce. And you can find us on uh, YouTube at EOT Newsflash as well. Just look for us on there. And also check out Sean's um, Twitch and YouTube channel, Busted Sleeves. He's been doing some MTGO streaming with some Cinder decks. So don't forget to check that out as, as well. He's doing a lot of great job over there. And, yeah, Steven, it's your turn to say it. All right, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a good night.